This is a welding finger. Sometimes they're called third hands or helping hands. What they do is they help you hold pieces in place while you're setting them up to weld them. It's really just a shaped weight. It has a point on one end to contact your part and two feet on the back here to make it stable. And it hinges off of those two feet in the back. So what we're gonna do today is show you a basic fabrication of these. There's no special design to these. You get to make them whatever size and weight and shape you want. We're going to make a pair of these, show you the process, show a bunch of examples on how you can hold parts in different ways and how they'll make your welding setups a lot easier. These are something that I've been wanting to make for a long time. I've used them before and I've read articles about them and seen other people's designs, but I'm pretty excited to get these together and test them out. I'm a little embarrassed because we have a perfectly good diacro bender machine that would be perfect for this, but it's in disarray and not set up. So we're gonna do this the simple way with what we have on hand here. And for this project, that's gonna work out just fine. Something like that. This is a small set. A lot of the welding that we do is small pieces. These will be excellent for holding small pieces of sheet, pieces of wire, holding odd positions in place. It's an alternative to using a fixture or using a magnet. I get pleasure out of using tools that I've made in the shop, especially if they over time prove to work well. It adds a little bit of reward and enjoyment to the whole process of making a project for yourself or for a client when you're doing it with tools and accessories that you made yourself for your style of work. Here's the basic idea. They are a weight and you can make these any size that you want. Could be made out of, you know, half inch, one inch rod, tubing, whatever you have around the shop or you want to use to make these out of. And the angle and, you know, the design is kind of up to you. One feature I did do is put a little bend in the foot here and that gives you your three points of contact. You have your two feet in the back, so you're very stable this way. It's gonna settle by itself. And then your third point of contact is the tip of the finger that goes on your part. It's a very stable fixed support. So something like this usually would be very difficult to weld. You could set it up to be vertical and check the angle, or you could set it at whatever angle you want. Based on friction on the table, the angle of the pressure, you know, you can use your square and set it up precisely at whatever angle you need and do your welding. So maybe this is a piece that's coming off a plate or another fixture or something like that. And maybe you're gonna build multiples of this on top of each other. You could raise up the foot and keep going, things like that. So that's basically what these are for, is to hold things in ways that would normally be difficult to hold them and ways that will eliminate the need for you to make a fixture. So even just a simple T-weld here, you could set up a piece of thin sheet with one of these or two of these, however many you need or want to create stability on your part. And then you could go around and tack it, remove your clamps and do the rest of your welding. They're great for parts that are smaller related to the clamp. If your part is generally lighter than the finger, it's gonna work better. They're very cheap. It's just two pieces, a couple bends and a weld. You know, it's basically free. Even if you bought the material, just a couple dollars of material and very fast 
to fabricate. If you do a lot of stainless welding, it may be worth making them out of stainless. That would eliminate any contamination considerations. I probably would also mention not to paint these. That eliminates the possibility of getting paint contamination in there. If you wanted to be fancy, you could put on brass or copper or bronze uh, tip on it, or you could also send it out and have the whole thing copper plated. Having the tip copper would prevent it from sticking to your part and copper plating the whole thing would eliminate any weld spatter if you do a lot of MIG welding and you're getting really close to the weight itself, the finger, the copper plating would prevent the weld spatter from sticking to the clamp. So now we have a part set up that's cantilevered. You know, as an example, you could get right up here and do your seams and even get on the inside if you orient the finger the right way. One benefit of this is it allows you to get to really small parts or really close to the clamp if you need to. I could go right along and seam this gap up here at the top and not touch the third hand or the finger here. The problem with magnets is doing a small part like this, I could still hold it in the same way, but now I have a magnetic field over the whole part basically. And trying to get in here and do a TIG weld that close to the magnet is probably going to give me a contaminated weld or it's going to disfigure the weld or, or deflect my arc in a way that I don't want. So this would be very difficult, probably would not work just because the magnet is so close to the weld arc.